everyone this is dr ankita jain welcome to my channel your dental tutor where i actually share the notes in relation to dentistry and periodontology and explain them in a very simplified form so it's been long time i have updated something but from now onwards i'll try to update it regularly now today's topic which we will be discussing will be food impaction i have seen various questions in the form of short notes have been asked in last few years on this particular topic and when we start writing we don't know what to write in food impaction so i have covered this part from the examination point of view especially so let's begin with the same the contents which we are going to cover under this topic are introduction definition classification of food impaction mechanism of food impaction factors causing food impaction so in the first part i will be covering up to the factors causing food impaction and rest of the headings will be covered in the next part let's see the introduction so whatever the form of teeth is there and their position with the other teeth and their arrangement in an arch it all decides the efficiency of mastication and keeping in mind that it should not damage the supporting structures any alteration in this form and arrangement can lead to the food impaction and also decrease in the efficiency of chewing capabilities as well as causing damage or injury to the periodontium now let's first see what are natural embrasures and their role so when the two teeth in the same arch are in contact then their curvatures adjacent to the contact areas form the embrasures these are also known as spillway spaces you can see here that if we see buccally and lingually these arrows actually will show you the space between the two teeth okay and these spaces this triangular space beneath the contact are known as embrasures okay these are naturally present and these are called natural embrasures and according to their positions that is buccally or lingually they are also called as buccal and lingual embrasures above the contact area the incisal or occlusal embrasures are present which are bounded by marginal ridges these are marginal ridges that is along the margins of the adjacent teeth and they join the cusp and incisal ridges okay so these are called as incisal or occlusal embrasures so there are buccal embrasures from the buccal side lingual embrasures from the lingual side and incisal or occlusal embrasures from the occlusal aspect of the teeth the form of embrasures serves basically three purposes first is they provide pathway for the food during the mastication they help in the grinding of food material and they also prevent the food from getting forced into the contact area or through the contact area definition if we see of food impaction it is the forceful wedging of food into the periodontium by occlusal forces as per glickman fifth edition and as per gokles and uh, team to in 2014 according to them it is the phenomenon appearing in the chewing cords when the food drags or fibers are pushed into the clearance by occlusal forces or owing to the gingival shrinkage okay so whenever the gingival gets shrink then there would be the extra space between the two teeth where food can get impact or due to the occlusal forces these food particles are forced into the or forced through the contact area so that is what is uh, the food impaction it may occur interproximally or in relation to the facial and lingual tooth surfaces common cause are gingival and periodontal diseases because due to gingival and periodontal diseases the gums change their position and there would be extra space where food can get lodged now let's see the classification of food impaction so there are two types of vertical food impaction according to the reason that is open contacts and irregular marginal ridges so when there will be the open contact then the food is directly entrapped in between the two teeth and when there are irregular marginal ridges that means when occlusal embrasure is improper and there is improper contact between the two teeth due to the different position of marginal ridge then it leads to the vertical food impaction food impaction associated with open contact areas 
causes more probing depth and clinical attachment loss interproximally than that associated with uneven marginal ridge so that means the reason of open contact is more dangerous than that of irregular marginal ridge for causing periodontal diseases next is lateral food impaction it is a second type of food impaction in lateral food impaction usually the lateral pressure from the lips cheeks and tongue causes the food to get entrapped between the teeth it happens when there are there is periodontal disease and this periodontal disease in turn causes uh, tissue destruction and gingival recession which again causes gingival embrasure to get enlarged and when the gingival embrasure gets enlarged then the lateral pressure from lips and cheeks and tongue causes the food to move into this embrasure and causing the interproximal food impaction so here the lateral forces are causing food impaction that's why it is known as horizontal food impaction or lateral food impaction okay next we come on to the mechanism of food impaction now usually the food impaction is prevented by the embrasures the natural embrasures present between the teeth okay and it in turn depends upon the integrity and location of proximal contact and prevents the food impaction next is contour of the marginal ridges and developmental grooves of course when the two teeth are in contact then marginal ridges are responsible for preventing the food from impacting contour of the facial and lingual surfaces these all three factors basically prevents the food from getting entrapped between the two teeth the contour of occlusal surface is established by the marginal ridges and developmental grooves which deflect the food from interproximal spaces okay so flattened if these contour is lost or these marginal ridges are lost what we see in case of atresion then that leads to the food impaction teeth wear down resulting in flattened surface so wear down that means teeth atresion or if there is any physical trauma to the teeth and due to which the surface of the tooth gets flattened then it causes the wedging effect of opposing cusp into the interproximal spaces okay that cusp is known as plunger cusp okay so the the cusp of the opposing tooth will have an effect on to the flattened tooth and that would lead to the food impaction occlusally so this is one of the mechanisms cusp that tend to forcibly wedge food into interproximal embrasure is called plunger cusp so the opposing tooth cusp which causes the food impaction on the flattened tooth or on the opposing teeth that is that particular cusp is known as plunger cusp plunger cusp effect may occur with wear or may be the result of a shift in tooth position after failure to replace the missing teeth so if we don't replace the missing tooth then those cusp have the capability to entrap the food particle onto the opposing tooth or between the opposing teeth in the opposite arch so when there is failure to replace missing tooth there would be shift in the tooth position mesially or distally and that will cause food impaction due to the presence of plunger cusp in the opposite arch next mechanism is anterior overbite forceful wedging of food into the gingiva of facial surfaces of lower anteriors and gingiva of lingual surfaces of maxillary anteriors so when there is deep bite then this causes the food impaction in the opposite arches next heading is factors causing food impaction hirschfeld has classified according to the reasons responsible for causing the food impaction this is the classification of the factors which causes the food impaction so hirschfeld has given five classes class 1 when the food impaction occurs due to occlusal wear that is when the teeth get flattened class 2 loss of proximal contact loss of proximal contact when there is failure of replacing the missing tooth or when there is open contact so that is loss of proximal contact class 3 extrusion beyond the occlusal plane when the opposite tooth is missing then there would be the extrusion of the particular tooth and that would cause food impaction class 4 congenital morphological abnormalities 
class 5 improperly constructed restoration that is due to the hydrogenic faults. So class 1 is again divided into type A type B. Class 1 we have seen that it is due to occlusal wear further divided into type A. Wedging action is produced by the transformation of occlusal convexities into oblique facets exaggerating the action of plunger cusp. Now here what happened curve of the tooth has been lost and it becomes oblique steep. When this oblique facet is created then this cusp is prone to cause food impaction and this is called as plunger cusp. Okay. Next is class 1 type B remaining obliquely one cusp of maxillary tooth overhanging the distal surface of its functional antagonist. If you will see here this part. So when this remaining part of tooth becomes pointed on the distal part of the tooth then it will lead to the food impaction on the distal part of opposing tooth. This particular thing. So this is class 1 type B. Class 1 type C is opposite to type uh, B. So when there is attrition of the mesial portion of the crown of the mandibular molar and it is overlapping the distal surface of the maxillary molar due to the functional relationship of mandibular molar is posed distally thus creating open contact at the mesial part and thus favoring the food impaction mesial to mandibular molar. Type 2 is loss of proximal support. So here we can see that when there is loss of proximal support here, there, here there is no tooth present then this tooth tends to migrate this side causing open contact between the two teeth and then this cusp will act as plunger cusp and exaggerates the food impaction. Class 2 type B loss of mesial support due to extraction. So when the extraction occurs then this mesial support is lost and it would cause this tooth to migrate or to drift mesially and causing the open contact here which will exaggerate the plunger cusp action in this area. Class 2 type C again there will be complete over a uh, complete open contact when the tooth moves distally. If it is due to mesial drifting then class 2 type B. If it is due to the distal drifting then class 2 type C. Class 2 type D permanent occlusal openings to the interdental spaces and it can occur due to the drifting after extraction. Habits forcing the tooth out of position. Periodontal diseases, caries. So these are different types of uh, reasons or factors due to which there would be permanent open contacts. Class 3 when the extrusion is beyond the occlusal plane. So we can see here that this tooth is extruding in the opposite arch due to the presence of missing teeth and it will also cause food impaction over here. Class 4 congenital morphologic abnormalities. So class 4 is further divided into type A when the position of tooth is in torsion that means it is in a twisted way. Type B when emphasized embrasures between thick neck teeth. Type C facial lingual tilting. Type D lingual or facial position of the tooth. So these are all the reasons which can be present since birth and uh, can cause food impaction. Class 5 improperly constructed restoration. Type A is omission of contact points. When the proper contact points are not established by the dentist after the restoration, it may cause food impaction. Type B, improper location of contact points. When the position is not proper, improper occlusal contour is given to the tooth after restoration, improperly constructed cantilever restorations and scalloped cervical bevels on the tissue bone areas of prosthetic restorations. So these are the various reasons which can be introduced by a practitioner and that can cause food impaction. This all come under class 5. The last point that is scalloped cervical bevels on margins of prosthetic crown 
it can be evaluated by running explorer along the margin margins of the prosthesis okay usually if prosthesis margins are over contoured at mesial and distal aspect it may induce periodontitis leading to loss of interproximal bone support so it's very important that after restoration after providing the crown over the tooth we have to check the proper position and location of the contact point it should be adequate enough in order to prevent the food particles from getting entrapped between the teeth and further causing the periodontal diseases or interproximal bone loss after this further headings will be completed in part 2 i hope you have got good notes till now on this particular topic and uh, soon i will be releasing the part 2 too thank you